Hi, I'm Blogmode, here to show you my fancy flight info script. Originally it was meant to replace the horrible UI, but since they fixed that, it's not that needed anymore. But on the other hand, who doesn't want a nice instrument panel in their spaceship? I mean, it's pretty sweet. What you see in front of you right now on the LCD panels is the script in action. It's highly customizable since it uses pixels instead of just regular text. It has currently, I think it's 17 different values you can show uh, in a lot of, bunch of different ways. For example, you can show it as a progress bar, very useful for speedometers and stuff like that. All right, let's start by installing it. I've already added a programmable block and a timer to this ship. All you need to do is enter the programmable block, press edit, browse workshop, and select the scripts from out here. I haven't uploaded it yet as of this making this video, so I'm just going to paste it from my clipboard. So check code and remember an exit. And now that's the script. Then we go to the timer block, drag this down to one second, check the silent box, otherwise you're gonna go mad. Click setup actions. Take the programmable block and add it. And choose the run option, not run with default argument. That will cause you troubles later. So you choose run and leave this empty. Then we take the timer block and we add it with trigger now. And then we take timer block again and you choose start. Then we can start the timer. All right, the script is now running and immediately we have uh, an, error, an error message basically. Um, this is going to be quite useful, I think. That's the idea at least. Uh, there's quite a lot of error messages. If you do something wrong, it will tell you. So if something isn't working as expected, check this box here and see if there's a problem. So right now it says that it can't find a tagged controller. It will use any controller it can find, so it, this would work as it is, since there's only two controllers on this ship, and they're both facing the same way. But we're going to tag the one we think is the important one, and we do that by typing FFI in the name, like that. Then we need to go back to the programmable block and tell the script that we changed something, and you do that by typing up uh, update in the argument field and pressing run. So the error disappeared. Uh, something I advise you to do, uh, since you're going to update it quite a lot, is go out and go into your, uh, yeah, press G to get into the toolbar menu. Take the programmable block and add it with run, and this time you type update here. So now you can press 2 in this case to update uh, the script. All right. Uh, another thing, you can see that the cockpit got a number, and you can see the same number down here. That's the uh, identification number for this script. So if you have two ships uh, connect to each other that are both running this script, they won't intervene. All right, let's set up a text panel. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be lazy and choose a preset. So I'll type FFI, all all configurations start with FFI. And then I'm going to type the name of the preset. And this is called altitude. Like that. Okay, if we update the panel now, we get that panel like that. Okay. Um, one thing to note right now, uh, the landing gears are locked, so it's saying it's on the ground. If I unlock them, it says we're three meters above the ground, so let's let's land on the actual ground instead of my little platform. Like that. Okay, 1.78 meters above ground. Uh, if we wanted to show zero when we're underground, we can go into the programmable block and press custom data and access the settings. And here we can change the controller offset to 1.78. Uh, also, I'm going to change the top speed since I have a speed mod installed. So we get that out of the, out of the way. And then just 
update the script and now we're on the ground despite not having the landing gears locked. Okay. Um, next, let's, let's uh, create our own panel. So I'm going to enter custom data again. And like I said before, all script starts with FFI. Uh, no semicolon there. Um, and then, uh, then each each uh, element on a display is typed like this. So you have the element name, and then you have a column, uh, and then most of them has the x and y coordinates on the panel right here. And it's supposed to be a comma, not a dot. And then some of them has width and height as well. Uh, and then comes the value you want to display. So, in this case, uh, okay. Then a lot of them, I think most of them has options and you can type the options in any order you want. It's hard to type and talk at the same time, uh, like this. Uh, but the first part, this needs to be in order. Uh, all right. I'm going to make this a comment so that it isn't parsed by the script. And then I'm going to make another comment and say battery. Because I'm going to add the, the battery indicator you saw from the intro up in the right corner. Okay, so first of all, we want to see the value, uh, like how uh, the charge of the battery. So we type value, and this will show a text. I want it on position x position 4 and y position 5 and then uh, this doesn't have, have a width and a height so we're going to go directly for the value and it is battery charge. Okay let's try this and see what we get. We have the charge but megawatt hours are not very useful. So let's go back to the panel and add the option percent. This will make the value show in percent instead of the the actual unit it is from the beginning. 74%, that's a lot more useful. Okay, next up is the actual battery indicator. Um, so we want that to be a progress bar to start off, and I want it on x position 30, y position 4, and I want it to be 25 wide and 7 high. It's going to be the same um, value as the other one, but in this case we don't need to add a percentage thing because it's a progress bar, it's going to be in percent anyway. Okay, let's um, add another thing as well. Fill. This option is usually uh, not <laughs> the way it works uh, here. Uh, usually it decides if a rectangle uh, is filled or if it's just the outline. But in this case it's going to create a background for the, um, the progress bar. This might change in the future but um, it's more of a debugging thing so you know where the progress bar is. Uh, it has a fixed color and stuff like that. If you want to make your own background for the progress bar, you just draw a rectangle before, like the, at the same place and at the same size as this bar, and set it whatever color you want. Okay, but let's uh, let's see how this looks. Yeah, there we have it, a uh, progress bar. Uh, it doesn't look like a battery yet, uh, and we can do that with another one of the elements we can use. But before that, we should set the colors. Uh, the default color is white, but if you add another color, it will use that as the default instead. So if you want white and another color, you will have to specify both. Uh, okay, so I'm going to choose. Um, I'm going to choose blue right now. Uh, this should be black, but. Uh, we want to see where this uh, thing I'm going to make right now ends up. What I'm going to show is an um, it's an icon that you can specify yourself. 
Uh, I want it at the same position as the battery progress bar. And now comes the, I think this is the trickiest thing to define of all the elements there are. Or is, or, yeah. um, you define it with ones and zeros. Uh, and like each one uh, or zero represents a pixel or no pixel. And then you just go from left to right and from up to down, uh, separating each line with a space. So I'm, my icon here is going to be two pixels wide. I'm going to have two pixels. And then I'm going to have the next line with two pixels. And then the third line, no pixels. And same for the fourth and fifth. And then on the sixth, I'm going to have two pixels again. And the same on the seventh. So this is going to create a yeah, column, basically, this character. Uh, on top of the battery bar. So let's look how that looks. Yeah. Uh, that makes it look like a battery if we turn these black like the background. So let's do that. Let's also, uh, well, yeah, black. Um, oops, like that. Now the last thing we have to do is flip the bar because right now the battery bar is going the wrong way. It looks strange. That's also easy. You just add the option invert, and you're done with that. All right. Um, I'm not going to go through all the elements since it will take forever. This video is already quite long. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually remove all of this and load the preload for this because all these uh, three panels have a preload and I believe this is called uh, it's called mass actually let's just type something random in here and we can look at the error message to see what uh, lift is the one I want here okay And then I'm going to set this one as well as FFI tug uh, speed. So there we have them. All right. Uh, one last thing I'm going to show you. If you want more panels that shows the same thing, instead of configuring them again, does the sun have to be directly in our face? Um, okay, so if you want the same panel again, you can just create a panel. And then instead of uh, copying the whole thing, like from in here, or using the preset again, you can just take the name of it, copy that, and go back to the other panel, wherever it went. Ah, there we go. And we say FFI, and then you type copy. Uh, copy. And the name of the panel you want to copy. And um, if you were observant, you were going to know that if we update it now, nothing's going to happen because of the settings. Uh, this is a small ship, so by default, it has the setting. Uh, to pause the program while away. So while we're not in the cockpit, I don't know if you can see. They're like grayed out. Um, so when you park your, your ship on another ship, it won't be running because if you're not in it, what's the point of seeing how fast it's going and stuff like that. But for large ship, you w might want to see that. So it doesn't pass it by default on them. But you can change the setting. Uh, okay, actually let's look like this and update, and there we have that one. So now we can fly in third person and see how fast we're going without the UI. Alright, I think that's it. Um, yeah, 
we can fly and we have all the data in the world. Yeah, well, not in the world. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and I hope you like my script. Hey, wait, I forgot something. Uh, I have to, of course, show you my font as well because I think this looks so very cartoony. So let's select all of them and choose dot matrix. It's on the workshop. And it looks like this. Suddenly it fits in with Space Engineers. And it's no longer a cartoon. Alright. Thanks for watching. Bye.